Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I drove my daughter here. I walked her down the aisle and I gave her away. And now I make a speech. And the same men can multitask. Don't you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, today is a wonderful, happy day. It is very special to be speaking here on the Gulf of Mexico coast in the wonderful American state of Florida. How glad I am to welcome one and all. Everyone here is special to the bride and groom and I thank you all for coming here today. At this point, it is normal to mention someone who has traveled a great distance, but as that applies to everyone, let's hear a cheer from everyone. Yeah. We have Americans, and Europeans, and me. I'm from a different planet, so it should be a good night. <laughs> At this point, I would like to mention absent friends, who would love to be here, but for various reasons could not be. Let's hear it for absent friends. Yay! May I also thank everyone involved in organizing this lovely day. Anna Marie Island is a special place to be celebrating this wonderful occasion. Special thanks to Diana and Ray Kent for their wonderful hospitality and generosity. Carolyn is lucky to have you as her mother and father-in-law. Let's hear a cheer for Diana and Ray. A little P.S. Diana makes an awesome cheesecake, homemade. <laughs> so if you're ever in Bridge of Fallen in Scotland, knock on her door. <laughs> well, there. Special thanks also to Mother of the Bride, Diane. From ironing gowns to arranging the flowers and the million and one other things a mother does, let's hear a big cheer for Diane. Ah, Carolyn, what a beautiful bride you are today. Carolyn was born on the 11th of November, 1979. It was a cold day, and after she was born, I came out of the hospital to fall in snow. My late mother-in-law immediately christened her Snowflake. Now, lots of snowflakes cause transport disruption, and people have had fatal injuries inflicted because of them. But you couldn't be killed by a snowflake, could you? Ladies and gentlemen, this snowflake nearly killed herself and me at Ledburn Crossroads in the Scottish Borders. Ledburn Crossroads is a main road with two adjoining roads, and you give way to the main road. Carlin just drove over the junction at 50 miles an hour. I was speechless. I'm still getting counseling and tablets five years on. <laughs> Women drivers, eh? <laughs> on a better note, Carlin was in the vanguard of ladies' football, and your mum, sisters and myself take great pride in that. This led her to her physiotherapy career, and we take great pride in that also. Well done, Carlin. Now, a physiotherapist may recommend you purchase a waterbed, Richard. But I know a few couples who said it was the start of them drifting apart, so don't buy one. <laughs> now, to my new son-in-law, Richard. Richard, may I take this opportunity of welcoming you to my family. Today's a life-changing event, Richard, as you gain four female in-laws and me, Richard. I will be there to offer advice if there's any problems. All I ask is you bring a bottle of malt scotch and we'll get to the bottom of any problems. Don't worry about that. Finally, may I take this opportunity of wishing both of you a long and happy marriage and ask everyone to be upstanding. Here's wishing the couple every happiness. 
I propose a toast to the bride and groom. The bride and groom, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you. Now a small PS. Carpet Right in the UK have asked me to pass on their congratulations to you on your wedding day. You ordered a luxury carpet and underfelt from them in August and at the end of September still no delivery. We apologise and say that the luxury carpet will be fitted before you return from honeymoon. Oh, I nearly forgot the underfelt. You'll both get that later tonight. <laughs> oh, I wish it was me. It's been a while. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> pass over to the best man. No, this one first. This one first. So good afternoon everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here to sunny and beautiful Anna Maria Island. Um, I'm glad everybody could make it. Um, my name is Jason and um, it's a pleasure, a privilege and an honour to be Richard's best man here on his wedding. Um, although at last night at 1am uh, when I was actually writing this speech, I was firmly of the opinion that he was a real jerk for doing this to me. <laughs> But seriously, it's a real honor. Um, we've been friends since we were yay small. So um, we've known each other for something like 35 years, which is about as far back as I can remember. Um, so I've been given strict instructions to keep this short and to avoid any shocking and humiliating stories. But since Richard's already been best man my wedding last year, that's got that out of the way. So this really... It makes me free for me to say whatever I like, so... <laughs> Such as that time in Amsterdam. But I'll come to that later. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank a few people. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. It's been great to see everybody, all of Titch's friends and family, and Caroline's friends and family, to come here as well. Um, I'd like to thank our hosts for giving such a beautiful ceremony, and I'd like to thank Carolyn's parents, Richard's parents, uh, for helping make today possible. Uh, I'd like to thank our beautiful bridesmaids for helping make this such a special occasion. Uh, but most of all, I'd like to thank the weather for giving us sunshine and sparing us the thunder, the lightning, and the torrential <laughs> rain that we thought we might have. Um, <laughs> I'm really thankful to be here, and. Um, I'd like to say, Caroline, you're looking gorgeous. You, you always look gorgeous, but today you're absolutely stunning. And um, Titch, your nice cravat. <laughs> uh, but seriously, Titch, you've been, you've been an inspiration to me my whole life. And uh, I've been nervous about this speech. Um, and when I've been times driving around in Orlando where I've been thinking, you know, I've been trying to remember what it was that you said when you were best man at my wedding last year. And I've been finding myself thinking, I wish I could get a copy of Richard's notes. <laughs> Which is funny because that's pretty much how, the only way I got good marks at school was <laughs> getting a copy of Richard's notes. Um, and I can honestly say that my life would absolutely be different uh, if I'd never been friends with Richard the whole uh, since we were... Yeah. So in some ways it's been tough having somebody who um, at school has been literally getting 100% marks in all classes, uh, getting ducks of the school, ducks of the university, scholarships, and all the rest of it. A lot of people, they would be quite big-handed with that kind of achievement, but Titch has always been very level-headed, has always been enormously patient, enormously helpful whenever anybody's needed to have his help. And that included when my father asked him for advice on how you could make a time travel machine or how you could make an anti-gravity device. So, very, very forgiving. Um, and since meeting Carolyn, it's uh, obvious how well suited and how obvious how very happy they are together. Um, 
And it's not just because she's a physiotherapist and he's always injuring himself. <laughs> no, it's really obvious why Carolyn came top of the Titch's dating website, maybe pile. <laughs> Something I was determined to get into this speech. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Titch has always been a very confident person, and um, I would say in the last couple of years, I've seen Titch more confident, more happy than I think I've ever seen him before. So it's been it's been truly great to see. And to end, I'd like to I'd like if you could all join in a toast to the happy couple. Uh, so here is could could everybody be standing? Here's to a lifetime of joy, happiness, and health for Richard and Carolyn, Mr. and Mrs. Kent. Over to you. So first of all, thank you very much uh, to both Ian uh, and Jason. Awesome speeches, thank you very much. It's, uh, he was quite kind to me in the end, wasn't he? Moves <laughs> 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 from the side. Um, so it does make me very, very happy here to be here today and uh, say, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, on behalf of my wife and I, <laughs> welcome to our beach wedding. Uh, we do appreciate that uh, as a destination wedding, everyone has travelled uh, from far and wide uh, you know, to be with us on this special day, so thank you very much. It, it means a great deal to us that uh, we've all uh, travelled here today, so thank you to everyone for coming along today. Uh, I have a couple of cards from people who were unable to attend, but I'd just quickly like to uh, mention them. Uh, so we have a card from Auntie Isabel and Uncle Jim, uh, who sent their uh, best wishes. Uh, and the other card I'd specifically like to read out is from uh, Carolyn's uncle Gary and Auntie Sheila, who couldn't be here today, sadly, because Gary uh, was recovering from an operation. They say, sorry we cannot be with you on your special day, wishing you both all the best for your future together. So that's uh, very nice to hear. Uh, and I also just this morning did receive a text I'd like to read out as well, which said, uh, uh, Richard and Carolyn, so sorry we couldn't make your wedding today. Uh, Victoria has a fashion show to organise, and I have to take Brooklyn shopping for a new skateboard. Uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Lots of love, David. <laughs> the Beckhams are so lovely. They're so lovely. Yeah, they, they couldn't be here, I'm afraid, Carolyn. Uh, more seriously, as has been said, there are a number of people who couldn't make it here today, uh, couldn't make the trip. So I'd like to uh, quickly make a toast uh, to absent friends and family. I should warn you, there are a few toasts coming up, so you'll be up and down a little bit. So if we could all be upstanding, please, uh, for a toast uh, to absent friends and family and people who couldn't be here today. So next, I'd uh, very much like to thank my wife's uh, family for welcoming me into the Morris clan. <laughs> Love it, it's a true clan. <laughs> Ian and Diane, you have been so very, very welcoming and generous to, to both me and to Heather. And uh, right from day one, we, we really have truly felt like we're part of the family. So thank you very, very much. Uh, Laura and Gillian have also treated us like family, but it's, it's fair to say that was from day two. Uh, you, you get a day's grace before they really start taking the mick out of you. So it's uh, day two, day two from then. I also have to thank Ian Diane, obviously, for, for raising such a beautiful and amazing daughter and for allowing me to have her hand in marriage. I do promise to do everything I can to make her happy. Uh, I also want to thank my parents, Ray and Diana, uh, who have raised and supported both me and my, my brother Steve uh, throughout the years. Uh, without your continued support and guidance, you know, we, we wouldn't be who we are today. Uh, life is twisted and turned, as it does for all of us, uh, and it means a lot to me that, that you guys have always been there. Uh, so, so, and I've also seen how you've welcomed Carolyn into our family. Uh, so I, I thank you uh, on behalf of my wife. Uh, and, and just for reference, that probably is the last time I will be permitted to speak on behalf of my wife. So, so I, I enjoyed that moment. 
Um, so if you could have another toast, please, we could all be upstanding for a toast to the parents. To the parents. So next up, I'd like to thank the, uh, the gorgeous bridesmaids all along at the end there. Okay, yes, round of applause. Hello, Laurie and Gillian, you do look absolutely stunning today. Um, the fact that Carolyn was on time, ready to go, fully dressed, uh, and didn't suffer any of her usual Minister of Transport moments is definitely down to you three. So, uh, a job fantastically well done. She's, she's complaining there. <laughs> So if you can all be outstanding one more time, I'm going to do a toast to the bridesmaids, please. Woo! To the bridesmaids. And before moving on, I, I would like to thank our wonderful wedding coordinators, uh, Kathy and the whole crew from San Petal Weddings. They've, honestly, they've taken the pain out of organising today. And I think you'll agree they've organised a really, truly stunning occasion. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's, who's made today possible. So from us and all the guests here today, thank you to San Pedro Weddings for, for organising. <laughs> I wouldn't be a groom's speech if I didn't uh, speak a little about uh, the star of the show, which is Carolyn. Uh, so I... I knew from early on that Carolyn would hold a, a really special place uh, in my life and I'd like to share with you a short tale from, from one of our first dates. <laughs> uh, we, we went to a Japanese restaurant in Edinburgh called Koi, which is uh, sadly not there anymore. But at this particular restaurant they have a, a post-dinner activity uh, involving a spatula uh, and an egg and a chef's hat. Uh, and basically what you had to do uh, is to, to flick the egg from the table in the air and catch it in your chef's hat. Uh, this was when I first spotted Carolyn's competitive streak, which you'll all be familiar with, I'm sure. Uh, having missed and completely covered myself in raw egg, uh, much to the hilarity of everyone around, uh, it was Carolyn's turn, and she suddenly became very, very serious. And this was this was this was day two or three. This was early on. Uh, she suddenly weighs the egg. She tested the spatula stiffness, she, she gauged the hat brim. You can see arcs of gravitational forces being computed. And she tossed it up in the air, caught it in the hat, absolutely no drama at all whatsoever. I was absolutely gutted, uh, but also quietly super impressed. So I, I remember that very clearly to this day. From that moment, Carolyn and I grew uh, closer and closer, and, and last year I knew the time was right to propose. Uh, being a romantic at heart, I, I hatched a cliched, cliched but romantic plan, she's cringing already, uh, to propose at the top of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. That, that, you know, that, that's got to be a, a good job, right? The plan was simple, we'd enjoy a beautiful meal, we'd have lovely food, uh, we'd head up after the meal in the evening to the top of the Eiffel Tower, be quiet and very romantic, and I popped the question, she obviously should say yes, this was, this was the plan, this was, this was lovely. In reality, Carolyn spent the entire weekend complaining that there would be no point going up the tower at night because you wouldn't be able to see anything. <laughs> Even worse, there was low cloud on the day. As we ascended in the lift, we couldn't see anything, and I do mean nothing, from the tower whatsoever. Even worse, we got to the top of the tower, which is a little sort of metal bucket thing if you've ever been there, and it was absolutely stuffed full of Japanese tourists, with nothing to look at. So this was awesome, this was going really to plan. So, Descending to one knee, I was, I was suddenly aware of about a hundred iPads suddenly pointed in our direction. Uh, and uh, I wasn't going to be, be, be dissuaded. So I popped the question, and to which Carolyn's response was, I'll say yes if you get off your knee. <laughs> she, she never has enjoyed being the centre of attention. So here we are in Florida, it's, it's three and a half years after we first met. And it makes me the happiest man alive to say Carolyn is now my wife. She looks absolutely stunning today, I think you'll all agree. Radiant and beautiful. <laughs> Carolyn, I love you with all my heart. Thank you for marrying me and loving me as much as I love you. So if we can all be upstanding for the final toast of the evening. To my... <laughs> To my beautiful new wife, to the new Mrs. Kent, to the gorgeous bride. 
Hello. <laughs> Kiss you one. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you all enjoy the evening and enjoy uh, evening's entertainment. Not me. Thank you very much. <laughs>